Good afternoon, folks. I am here in Budapest. Budapest. Tizenegedik. <laughs> Kerolet. District 11. AKA Laj Manyosh. And do I have a story for you? And who do we have here but Gardoni Geza? Wow, look at Gardoni Geza. What a handsome, handsome man he is. One of my favorite Hungarian historical writers, of course. He pens Egri Cilagok, Gerge Bonamisa, Bonamisa Gerge. But he also wrote The Invisible Man about Attila the Hun, a great, triumphant writer and a teller of tall tales. But perhaps not even Gardon Geza could have penned a tale quite as imaginative as the real true life story of the 19th century man who came to be known as as Eilet Chasaranak. There we see right there, Chasar. But that's not a uh, Shomoshi Karoi aka Carl Singer, who deemed himself the life emperor and gained great notoriety in Findesikl, Hungary. He was a man filled with venom and verve and vigor who transformed the city of Budapest into a place to rival anywhere in Europe in terms of its entertainment offerings. Oh, and there on the sign we can see it. Lajmanyos, that's the neighborhood that we're in. Lajmanyos. Now Lajmanyos is a neighborhood known for many things. Pubs and universities. It's really the lifeblood of the Buddha side of the city. And we just scampered across Bartok Bela Ut, which is the avenue with all the bars and restaurants and shops. And perhaps we shall return there at the end of the episode. But for now, I want us to roll our minds back to the 19th century. In fact, our story begins at the place where our last With Willie episode was shot, in Gyur, and the year is 1827, Ezer Nyotsas Husenheit. Now before we start the story, I want to show you all a Budapest institution, right on the corner of Budafok and Karinti Frigyes. It's a hush hentasharu a local butcher shop. Junyuru, sep. Imadom. Imadom. Najonyo Neski. That is one of the classic Budapest hush hentasharus. You can see them all over the city. But that's a lunch counter where you can get pork knuckle, blood sausage, kolbas, schnitzel, or as we call it here in Hungary. What do we call it here in Hungary? Beci Selet. <laughs> 1827. Ezer Nyosas Husen Heit in Gyur. And that is where Shomoshi Karoi, who back there was known as Carl Singer, is born. And he had a rather nondescript childhood as a member of a lower working class family and his story really gets going during the 1848 Sabachak hearts the 48 revolution he's in his early 20s and he's in the city of Komarom and he gets taken up as many young Hungarians did at the time with the revolutionary fervor of the Sabachak hearts and he decides to join in on the rebellion. He's a military recruitment officer. That was his job title. Wow. It sounds like someone's brawling in there. Jesusum. Let's get a closer look. Jesusum. <laughs> Mindig? Yo, Sarinches. Save no pot. Mindig. Oh my god. Rather nice little pan out kert here. Great attention paid for the kids. Lovely. 
So obviously the revolution, just like all the other liberal revolutions around Europe at the time, it's eventually suppressed. And Carl Singer, who is soon to change his name to Shomoshi Karoi, he's got to look for a new line of work. So he heads to the capital. He heads to Budapest. That's a power stance. A power, power stance. Oh, <laughs> looks like uh, Towley from South Park. Towley Baran. Okay, so he heads to the capital. He heads to the capital. He's looking for work. And right by the Nemzeti Museum, which was built at the time, it's one of Budapest's most magnificent buildings, old and triumphant. <laughs> Galambok, Galambok. And right by the Nemzeti Museum. Today, it's known as Calvin Ter. Back then, it was known as Sena Ter. And there was a pub, a kochma, a shirazu, a very infamous shirazu, known as the Kate Pistoi, the Two Pistols Bar. It was a notorious bar in a notorious neighborhood. They said back then, by the Nemzeti Museum in Sena Ter, aka Calvin Ter, you had to carry two pistols just to be safe. And infamous, infamous characters used to visit this bar, men such as Shobri Yoshka of Naj Bayus fame. And, well, Shomoshi Karoi, he fit right in. He fit right in and he got a job. He's working for the boss. The boss is a guy with a Polish name. It's like Sowadoba, Jozef Sowadoba or something. And, uh, you know, Shomoshi Karoi, he's quite a colorful character. And he's beginning to make a name for himself. The patrons love him. He's flirting with the girls. But one woman steals his heart. And that is the owner of the pub's sister. Who happens to be fat and not so pleasant to look at. But <laughs> Shomoshi, Shomoshi Karoi, he's out to make a name for himself. And so he says, you know what? Let's tie the knot. I'm marrying into the family business. Kate Pistoy, I'm gonna be a part owner. Willie Sports. Maybe one day if I play my cards right, I can become the part owner of this place. Although they forgot the E. That's all right. At least it's not a Y. There's two types of willies in this world. There's willies with Ys and there's willies with IEs. We save the Ys for the whales and the chocolate factory owners. The IEs were off to bigger and better things. Regi. So a few years go by and Shomo Shikaro, he's starting to think, okay, maybe this was a mistake. He's not cut out for married life. So what does he do? What does he do? He decides to make a run for it. And he steals thousands of forints, which was a ton of money at that time, while he's at it. Runs away all the way to Holland. He has to go all the way to the Netherlands to escape the wrath of the spurned family who owned the Kate Pistoy. Wow. And now the adventure begins in earnest. Here we are at the uh, BME Athletic Center. All sorts of sports and activities here at the Budapesti Agitemi Sport Plaza. Oh, and that's the Tushka. The Tushka. It's the hockey arena. Ketazer Tizanej. It was originally built, or planned rather, for the 1996 exhibition, this big world exhibition that was supposed to take place but never did. And it's interesting because there's another exhibition of the 96 variety, although one century earlier, and that's where our story is heading. But first, back to Amsterdam, as Karoshi, excuse me, Shomoshi Karoi is on the run. Who knew? A little spot of uh, beach volleyball here in Budapest. And there is the mall tower, the mall gas tower, rising above like some sort of, well, oppressive monolith. Nonetheless, nonetheless, Amsterdam, and we're talking, I don't know, let's think, early 1860s, 1850s. Shomoshi Karo, he's there, and he takes a job with a circus in Amsterdam that's run by a guy named Wilhelm Kata. And Wilhelm Kara, he's a famous circus owner. And Shomoshi Karoi, he begins to take a liking to this type of work. 
circuses, entertainment, and the like. Wow, a quite jubilant fall harvest here. Look at that. Pretty soon he moves on, skirting closer and closer and closer back to his homeland, and he ends up in Prague. Now, in the 1860s, Prague was not really a Czech city. In fact, it was becoming a Czech city as the Czech language and the Czech nationalism began to take root and flourish during the 19th century. But up until that point, it had been one of the centers of the Habsburg monarchy and was really considered to be a German city, at least in terms of the elite and ruling class. Now, Shomoshi Karoy, he makes it over there as a Hungarian and he goes to work at a circus once more, this time as the deputy general manager, which gave him a lot of responsibility, a lot of responsibility. It wasn't even really necessarily a circus. It was more like an entertainment show of many different stripes. I mean, you imagine this burgeoning, modernizing city of Prague, as well as the rest of Central Eastern Europe at the time, flourishing and having a lot of money pumped in to all the projects. And there was a big development of nightlife that coincided with the relative degradation of societal mores and morality. Oh, what a theme, what a theme to hearken in on. Anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Shomoshi Karoy, he's working in Prague, he's winning acclaim, he's becoming quite well known as this general manager of a theater, entertainment, circus, and the like. And now, enough time has passed by the early 1870s that he's ready to move back to his homeland of Hungary and set up shop in Budapest <laughs> as Azelet Chasaranak. Info Park Research Center. Huh. IBM. You know, one thing that my town in New York is known for, my town of Armonk, it's a suburb of New York City, and it's known as the world headquarters of IBM. And that's about all that it's known for. But what are you gonna do? At least it's something. But now Shomoshi Karoa, he wants to become known for something as well. And he starts taking employment at entertainment spots, nightclubs, restaurants, bars around Budapest. Eventually he opens up his own shop, his own club on the Shugarut, today known as Andrashi. And he's gaining some success, he's making some money, he's beginning to become a man to be reckoned with. Speaking of nightlife, here we have Barba Negra. Barba Negra. Rock and roll, baby! Woo! Yeah! Death metal! Anyway, heard a lot of good things. Okay, this right here is the Laj Manos. The Laj Manos Heed. Now it's known as the Rako Tihir, but originally the Lajman Yoshid. And the Lajman Yoshid is a very interesting bridge. You see those lights, those sort of idiosyncratic red light stanchions? They are meant to illuminate every part of the bridge equally. Fun fact, fun fact. Oh, look who it is. <laughs> Man of the hour. Man of the hour, connecting Buddha and Pest. So, he's back in town, he's working in nightlife, he's working in entertainment, and he's opening up his own clubs, and now the 1890s roll around. And we have to reflect on 1890s Hungary, this last decade in the 19th century, a century of progress and transformation all around Europe, and especially progress and transformation in Budapest, after the War of Independence, the doomed War of Independence in 1848, Ferenc Jozef, the emperor, he put down hard, absolutist, harsh, repressive rule all over his domains to reassort his authority. And this upset a lot of people, most of all the Hungarians, who were used to having a little bit more autonomy and say in how things went in their half of the emperor. Empire, emperor, empire. 
always mix those two up. So the Hungarians, they quibble and they quarrel and they bicker and they fight. And eventually, 1867, the dual monarchy, Austria-Hungary, Ferenc Jozef is coronated along with his wife, Empress Sisi, as not only the emperor and empress of Austria, but also as the king and queen of the crown of St. Stephen, St. Istvan. And now the next few decades, as Shomoshi Karoi is making his name as Azelat Chasaranak, they are a time of massive development and money and influence <laughs> for Budapest, which is one of the fastest growing cities in all of Europe. This interesting building right here is the Vizi Rendorsheg. Rendorsheg. The Vizi Rendorsheg. The boat police officers, the water police. <laughs> cool office. Ah, you can smell the lovely Duna. Rendersheg. Wow, this must be where they dock all the Rendersheg boats. Not John Erikesh. So Shomoshi Karoi, he's starting to rake in the big bucks, the big cheese, Naj Forintok. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, look at this. Soupy, soupy, soupy. Delightful little mobile library here. Petr Vishandor, Mori Jigmond. Mamma mia. He's starting to rake in the big bucks. And at the beginning of the 1890s, along with all this money and influence and power that's rushing into Budapest, as the second half of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, the second capital, Shomoshi Karoi, he decides to open up his big, 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 big project. And that is the Fuvaroshi Orpheum. The Fuvaroshi Orpheum, known colloquially as the Fun House. And it's on the Najmezu Street, this Fuvaroshi Orpheum and all sorts of entertainment happens there. You can think of this fun house as Budapest's answer to the Moulin Rouge. Perhaps not quite as salacious, who knows, who knows? But it is a place to indulge in entertainments of every type, cabaret, theater, all sorts of entertainments are going on there. And Shomoshi Karoi, he's raking in the cash like you would never believe. And the height of his ambition is manifested here at the Kopasigat. <laughs> the Kopasigat. It's this little water area in Budapest. It used to be much bigger. It extended all the way past that Laj Manyoshi Heed. And actually, technically, now, this isn't even considered Laj Manyosh. But back in Shomoshi Karoi's time, it was. And it went all the way past that bridge there. It was a massive, massive harbor. Originally constructed artificially following the floods of 1838. Those horrific floods. Horrific, horrific. That killed so many. And they decided they needed to regulate the Danube, the Duna. And so they built this harbor. And for a while, it was an active harbor. But it was far too expensive, a bit of a doomed enterprise. And by the 890s, not the 890s, this isn't home Vogelash times, by the 1890s, it was an afterthought, a forgotten, discarded water area. And speaking of the home Vogelash, what else was happening in 1890s Hungary? Oh, that's right, the 1000 year anniversary of the settlement by the Magyars and the conquest of the Carpathian Basin. And that is where the idea for the Millennial Exhibition was born. Oh yes, look at these Usi Levelek. Mm, marvelous. You can just touch the season. Oh, huh. Doesn't smell that great actually. Now the Millennial Exhibition of 1896, oh, we could spend a whole 10 episodes on that. In fact, I'm writing a novel about it. But to keep a story from dragging on, too long. What you need to know is that it was a celebration of Hungarian of Magyar greatness, this a thousand year kingdom. And it was also slightly politically motivated because the Hungarian half of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, it had a lot of minority groups, a lot of Slavs, Slovaks, Serbs, Romanians. 
And the Hungarians, they wanted to consolidate their power. So this a thousand year celebration was in part a time of great joy and revelry, but it was also a politically motivated demonstration of strength and power. And the real heart of the Millennial Exhibition was over in the Varosliget. And that is where all the official uh, pavilions and exhibition sites and opening ceremonies and the uh, Vaida Hunyad Castle and the Ush Budavar was set up. And the Ush Budavar was sort of the entertainment complex within the Varosliget, where you could experience what Budapest was like back in the day, an old Buddha, during actually, believe it or not, the time of the Turkish Empire. Because this was a period when Hungarian nationalism was beginning to take a great interest in the eastern roots of the Magyars, the eastern Asiatic Eurasian origin story, let's just say. And Shomoshi Karoy, he saw this Ush Budavar stuff and he was like, all right, that's fucking boring. We're gonna do this bigger, we're gonna do this better, we're gonna do this badder. And the reason that we've come over to the Kopasigat is because this is the site where Azelat Chasaranak decided to set up shop. And Shomoshi Karoy constructed a place on the Kopasigat, which remember extended all the way back down to Lajmanyosh, known infamously as Konstantinopoi Budapesten, Kish Konstantinopoi Budapesten, Little Constantinople in Budapest. And this was a dream work. It was created with the use of massive loans that Shomoshi Karoy took out, of course, secured against his thriving businesses as collateral and his reputation for being a man who could spin gold out of the illusory dreams of the masses. And that's what he set about to do. And what did they do with this Kish Konstantinopoli Budapesten? It became a dreamscape of Sultan's tents and canvasserai. Canvasserai? Caravanserais. And soothsayers, fortune tellers. The whole place was transformed with pavilions and entertainment halls and bars and bazaars. And you can imagine the type of crowd that this area attracted with its Asiatic influences and Shomoshi Karoi's reputation as this night emperor. Wow. Of course, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of tourists coming to Budapest at this time. And I like to think that those who really wanted to get nitty and gritty and experience a night on the town, they would have checked out the Varosliget and then they would have headed over here to the Kopasigat where dreams became reality and things were looking great i mean the official millennial exhibition it opened up beginning of may i think that this area Konstantinopoli, opened up like may 23rd and it got off to a riotous start everyone was so excited they thought that this would become this luxury entertainment center for years and decades and generations unfortunately it didn't quite work out like that because Quite simply, this area was absolutely inundated with mosquitoes. Ah, basam eggs when you go cut basam egg. And Shomoshi Karoy's big venture, which was supposed to generate so much profit and notoriety and fame, ended in disaster. It closed, oh, Semovic, after just a few months and went down as one of the biggest follies in Hungarian history. And what happened to Shomoshi Karoy? Azelet Chasaranak? Well, he ended up bankrupt, destitute, living as a tenant across the street from a steamstress shop in poverty and with his name, a shadow of what it once was. But that is why I study history, to resurrect these shadows and have them dance amongst the flickering moonlight once more. <laughs> okay, let's head back over to 
Lajmanyosh, and then we'll call it quits. Well, we're back out here on Bartok Bela Ut. Hey! <laughs> Where we began. And our day of fun is nearly done. Before the final song is sung, we must, of course, have a little bit of a drink at a local Shirazu Vaj Kochma to wrap things up. I always wanted to try this place out. The Boar Patika, the wine pharmacy. Let's give it a little roll. Hello. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. I hope you know how grateful I am to be given the platform and the opportunity to do what I love and make these episodes. It's truly an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure. You can check out my Patreon page www.patreon.com slash with Willie and every cent that is donated will be put back in to the business to make bigger, better and badder videos. And hopefully I don't end up like old uh, Shomoshi Karoi. Yunyuru <laughs> Pogacha. This may very well be the freshest Pogacha anyone's ever had in their entire life. Look at this. Shaitosh. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Mmm. Mmm. Urishkan. Oh, okay. Google Terkepe. Kusunam Sepen.